What happens when we run out of doctors? America has a shortage of doctors. It's a reason why costs for health care overall are rising faster than wages. Yet the biggest doctors association, the AMA, rarely talks about that. Instead, it talks about policies of structural and personal racism, food insecurity, housing insecurity, no access to fresh fruits and vegetables. But the AMA has a plan to address those problems. The AMA released a comprehensive strategic plan to guide us in our work to advance health equity. A comprehensive guide. Here it is. 54 pages telling doctors what words to use. Instead of saying equality, say equity. Don't say minority, say historically marginalized. Much of this report reads like a course in Marxism. Expose property rights. Individualism is problematic. This is what doctors should talk to patients about? It is important to try to understand if there's discrimination happening. Journalist Matt Iglesias wrote about the AMA's health equity plan. They want to be inclusive. There is evidence that there is discrimination. But they're talking here, though, things like people experiencing homelessness rather than homeless people. Iglesias leans left, and yet this guide is too much for him. The AMA wants doctors to tell patients decisions by landowners and large corporations limit prospects for good health. This is political propaganda. Can you imagine anyone actually doing this? What would happen if you were in a clinical setting and somebody starts giving you this lecture about landowners and then you're there in the patient and you're like, we're going to have an argument about why does poverty exist? Nobody practices medicine like that, and it wouldn't be helpful to anybody to start. He points out that while the AMA now tells doctors refer to neighborhoods as systematically divested rather than poor, it lobbies for things that hurt poor people. They restrict what kinds of people can provide medical services. They restrict who can become doctors. If you want to become a doctor in the United States, you first have to earn your bachelor's degree in university over four years. Then four years of med school, a residency, and a fellowship. By the time you've completed training, you'll be at least between 29 and 34 years of age. And so the United States has a very low number of physicians. Fewer than any European country. Austria has twice as many. We have the best paid physicians in the world, and we also have sort of the scarcest physicians in the world, and that's not a coincidence. Years ago, in most of America, anyone could practice medicine. This journal article says licensed doctors' objections to that led directly to the formation of the AMA. It's a trade group, right? I mean, it's a trade group of doctors. They are there to help their members and help advance the interests of their members. They're like the teachers union or the dock workers union. I mean, it's called a trade association rather than a union, but it's never been all that different. In 1986, the AMA called for smaller enrollment in med schools to curb an alleged surplus of doctors. Eleven years later, they even got the government to pay millions to training hospitals not to train doctors. That helped create today's shortage, which is severe enough that even economically illiterate people notice. The richest country in the history of the world simply does not have enough doctors. I wanted to interview an AMA official about their blocking competition. They declined, but they sent this statement saying, They've approved 20 new med schools and support increasing the number of physicians to address shortages. That's good, but give me a break. In the midst of a doctor shortage, the AMA and government limit the number of doctors. They also impose strict controls that keep out foreign doctors. There's no way to say, look, I've been treating patients in Canada or Italy or Australia for the past 10 years. I want to come to the U.S. Um, you know, and open up my own shop. These rules are why the average American doctor makes more than $200,000 a year. Such well-paid doctors can afford to be choosy about where to work. It's a reason it's tough to find a doctor in rural America. If you have enough medical doctors, then they have to start looking for patients. You know, when you say, hey, there's all these people, they're living in North Dakota. They don't have a convenient doctor to see. I could go there, I could have a successful business. That does happen in freer markets. Because there's no limit on the number of Walmarts or Targets you can open. They try to serve as many communities as they possibly can. If you cap the number of stores, people wouldn't put them in small towns. 
Likewise. Come this way, please. Restaurants keep time that's convenient for their customers. Uh, doctors, you know, keep hours that are convenient for doctors. Because doctors are scarce, people often ask nurses for help. Ferguson opened her clinic more than five years ago. She can do that under Texas law as long as she works with a supervising doctor. Only if she's supervised by a doctor? That makes it much harder to open sort of retail health clinics, other things that provide low cost, uh, high convenience. Many nurses give good care, but few doctors want to compete with a nurse. I gave up a decade of my life to become a doctor. If you want to function as a doctor, go get the training to be a doctor. And training shouldn't be like fraternity hazing, where you do it just to like show that you did it. Nurses have a lot of training, not as much as doctors, but there's a lot of useful stuff that they can do and they should be allowed to do it. The AMA lobbies against that. So in all the states in red here, nurse midwives may not open their own practice. Taking such options away hurts poor people. But the AMA doesn't talk about that. Instead, they claim, Meaningful progress won't happen until we as doctors recognize how profoundly systemic racism influences the health of our patients. Getting really obsessed with language politics is a good way to position themselves as the good guys without addressing their own role in creating these problems. Thanks for watching our video. If you want to help us cover more stories like this, hit that button.